Hi viewers, I am Damodaran. Welcome to this video lecture. In general, Euclidean rings satisfy division algorithms. In particular, the set of integers, the set of Gaussian integers, ring of polynomials over a field or being Euclidean rings satisfy division algorithms. In this video, we are going to learn the existence of left division algorithm in the Arvids ring of quaternions. The Arvids ring of quaternions left algorithm division helps us to characterize its left ideals which is ultimately helpful in proving the famous four square theorem. Let us go to the session. Left division algorithm. First look at the statement. If A and B are two elements of the Arvids ring of quaternions H with B not equal to 0, then this theorem says that we can find two elements C and D in H such that A is equal to C B plus D and norm of D is less than norm of B. Before going to the proof, we know that division algorithm of integers which says if we have any two integers a comma b then we can always find two integers t comma r if a and b are two integers then we can find two integers t comma r belongs to z such that A can be always written as Bt plus R where this modulus of R is less than modulus of T. This is division algorithm in the case of integers. The similar thing we have here. A is equal to Cb plus D and N of D is less than N of B. But then why it is called left division algorithm? The reason is in the case of algorithm of integers A equal to Bt plus R can also be written as Tb plus R. Tb plus R. You can write as Tb plus R. That is Bt is the same as Tb. So commutative property is true in the case of integers. Therefore, both sides it is true, so it is called simply division algorithm. Whereas, here, because we are in the Arvids ring, CB is not equal to BC. H does not satisfy commutative property in general. Therefore, you cannot write CB as BC. That is why this theorem is called left division algorithm. Okay. Having justified the name of the theorem, let us go to the proof. First, let us take two elements as given in the statement with B not equal to 0. That is what we are taking here. And uh, because A is in H, A will be of this form where these coefficients are in Z. Remember, Z is equal to half into 1 plus I plus J plus K. Now, we are going to prove this division algorithm in two cases. First case we are taking where B is a positive integer. So in this case we are taking simply B as a positive integer not a general Arvids quaternion. Okay. Uh, when we take like this B is a positive integer. So this B we are going to take as N now. That means n is a positive integer. Now since uh, t naught, t naught is also an integer and n is an integer, we can always find x naught and r as in the case of this Arvids ring. Here you have t naught, here you have t naught and you have r. And this we can always find two another integers x naught and r such that t can be 
T can be written as T naught into X naught plus R where this R is less than T naught. Um, using that here what we are doing is we are taking similar integers x0 and r where minus n by 2 is less than or equal to r is less than or equal to n by 2. This is possible by taking the negative reminders also. Okay. In that case what happens when we take this t0 minus nx0 which is simply r so modulus of r and modulus of r here is uh, less than uh, n by 2 therefore on squaring we get n square by 16 which is uh, less than n square by 4 so this we are taking as the equation number 1 ok now so now we got x naught now let us go to next one now since t naught and t1 are integers this t0 plus 2t1 is also an integer, again n is an integer. So using the same division algorithm, we can find two numbers uh, k and r1 such that you can write t0 plus 2t1 equal to kn plus r1 where r1 satisfies this condition. Okay. Now this k is found. Uh, x0 is already there. So, look at k minus x0. It may be even or odd. If it is even, then we take that k minus x0 as 2 into x1. Because k minus x0 is even, this x1 is integer. Then, from here, t0 plus 2 t1 is equal to we are substituting for this k from here. So, we are getting 2x1 plus x0 plus n, x0 into n plus r1. By taking this term to this, we get the modulus, which is modulus of r1. But modulus of r1 is less than n. Therefore, this is less than n. So, we proved here this one. See, already we found x0, which is an integer. Now, we found x1, which is also an integer. Okay. Now, what happens in the odd case? Suppose k minus x0 is odd, then this number is odd. You add 1 with that, you will get an even integer. That even integer we are taking as 2x1. Therefore, in this case also it is x1. x1 is integer. Now, when we take this to the left hand side, we can see that we get a modulus of r1 minus n and therefore this is less than or equal why we are not putting strictly less than here because what is r1 r1 is after all the reminder the reminder is the reminder may be zero also if it is zero then you will get zero minus you will get zero minus n which is less than or equal to n so even equality is also possible there right so that's what we proved is there exists an integer x1, there exists an integer x1 satisfying this condition. Okay. In the similar way, we can also find integers x2 and x3 satisfying these conditions. So, we take them as 3 and 4. So, we got 4 equations. Through these 4 equations, we got 4 numbers x0, x1, x2, x3. All those are integers. Okay. Now, with this, we are taking a new number C. What is that C? C is x naught Z, uh, x1 i, x2 j plus x3 k. As all these coefficients are integers, this C is now an element of H. So this this implies C belongs to H. Okay. Now uh, because these are integers, C belongs to H. Now let us take a minus C B as d because all these are in h d will also be in h so d is also an element of h okay now what is b b in our case is n so it is a minus c n 
for A we are substituting, for C we are substituting, and then we are writing the terms like this. Remember, Z is uh, half of 1 plus i plus j plus k, we are substituting that other terms as it is. And when we simplify, we get the uh, term without i, j, k like this, and the term with i, term with j, term with k like this. Okay. Now, this is this left hand side is d. What is d? d is a minus c n. So now on both sides, now we are taking norm of this. What is norm of a minus c n? How to find norm? Norm we will find as what? We will find as squares of the coefficient. So which is equal to, uh, when, when you square this, we will get 1 by 4 t naught minus n, n x naught whole square. And then when you square this, you will get and the corresponding square. So, we get the uh, norm of A minus C n in this manner. Okay. Now, look at what is the first one. 1 by 4 t naught minus n x naught whole square. Now, when you look at uh, 1, when you, when you look at 1 here, you, you can see that we proved norm of 1 by 2 t naught minus n x naught whole square is equal to less than n square by 4. So, similarly here, when you take these or, or less than or equal to n, substituting all these 1, 2, 3, 4, we get, this is less than n square by 4, etc. 4 times. And uh, this is simply n square. Therefore, n of a minus cn is less than n square. What is n square? n square is nothing but n of n. Remember, n is a uh, positive integer. Therefore, n of n equal to n square. But what is n we have taken? We have taken b only as n, therefore n of b. Okay. So thus from start, from this equation, we get a is equal to c b plus d. a is equal to c b plus d and n of d. What is d? d is again a minus c b. That means you will get uh, n of a minus c b is less than n square which is equal to n which is equal to n of b therefore you get n of b is less than n of b so that's in that way case 1 is true now we will go to the general case what is the general case in the first case we take we took b is a positive integer now we take a general non-zero element of h okay because b is not equal to zero uh, we know that if uh, x is not equal to zero n of x norm of x is a positive integer okay b is not equal to zero therefore n of b is a positive integer okay that n of b we take as n now then n equal to n of b equal to b b star so this n is a positive integer now we are going to apply the case one for this pair of elements instead of a we are taking a b star instead of b we are taking n but remember n is a positive integer therefore we can apply case one so using the case one a equal to here a is a b star is equal to c into b b is here n plus d1 where n of d1 is less than n of b which is n of a right. this comes from the case 1 because n is a positive integer ok now <coughs> therefore from this when you, when you look at this one n of a b star minus c n what is n of from this we will get a b star minus uh, c n is equal to d d1 what is d1 here d1 is n of a b star minus c n so n of a b star minus c1 n of d1 is less than n of n okay and uh, remember n is b b star so we are replacing it and here also n is b b star so we are b star is taken common and we, we know that the norm of x y is equal to norm of x into norm of y okay when x and y are quaternions so we can write, we can split in this way. On the right hand side also we can split. 
okay remember uh, our b is not equal to 0 uh, because b is not equal to 0 n of b is a n of b is a positive integer that means uh, this is not equal to 0 this implies b star is not equal to 0 because b star is not equal to 0 n of b star is also a positive therefore here this n of b star on both sides because it is positive when you cancel the inequality will be maintained so you get like this now we are taking a minus cb as d then because all these are in h d also is in h and a is equal to from this cb plus d where n of d what is d a minus cb a minus cb is less than n of b so we proved n of d is less than n of b okay then for in general case also we proved the left division algorithm this completes the proof i hope all of you enjoyed this if you like this video subscribe my channel damodaran sri ramlu thank you